It's been about two months since I uh, first debuted this 16S monitoring solution. Since then, I've grown a beard and some of you have built these boards and the feedback has been very positive. So I thought it was about time to install it on my home battery. The code for this new board hasn't needed any significant changes. So I feel this is now production ready and all the de design files and code will be merged into the master branch of the project. This is the battery system I built and uh, published on YouTube almost a year ago now. It's been happily powering my house and charging up from free solar energy. I've not run into any problems with the design or the, or the BMS. If you are interested in finding out more, I'll put a link in this video's description. I originally planned to mount the uh, battery on the wall behind me, but as you can see, it has stubbornly remained on my table for nearly a year. With hindsight, I think I got the shape of the battery box wrong and should have gone with a, uh, a server rack style back case, probably mounted on the floor. But that gives me another project to sort out in the future. Since those videos were published, I've added an active balancer, which is the reason why there is so much spaghetti wiring. This new monitoring board is just a simpler solution for people running up to 16 cells. It will also support multiple parallel battery setups. You just need to add additional monitoring boards. I want to mount the PCB outside of the insulated battery area for better airflow around the heatsink and fan. And this reveals the downside of this enclosure. It's long and thin, which means that the balance cables are going to be over one meter in length. Ideally, all the balance wires should be the same length to ensure that you get consistent cell readings. But given the size of this enclosure, I've decided to use two different lengths just to keep the wiring neater. At the start of this video, you watch me uh, crimping ferrules and uh, ring lugs onto the balance cables. There are 17 cables, one for each positive cell terminal and a negative connection. There isn't anything special about the colors, it's just what came in the pack. But I have used the red and black for the most positive and negative connectors. This is 18 AWG uh, silicone wire and I bought these uh, numbered cable markers, which I'll attach to each, each end of the cable to help identification. I'll leave Amazon links in the description if you want to buy anything similar. All the balance wires are connected into a, a removable 17 pin terminal block. If you look at the bottom of the PCB, the cell numbering is marked. My cells run from the most negative at the far end of the battery to the most positive towards the front. I'll start numbering at cell zero to match the DIY BMS web interface, which I, I know annoys a lot of you. The monitoring board also requires its own power connection from the battery. These are connected to the two pin header. Again, make sure you get the, get the polarity correct. The uh, silk screen writing on the bottom of the PCB shows this. Whilst you're installing, ensure you don't short circuit any of the balance wires, as that would be very bad. Also make sure they are screwed down tightly into the terminal block. So the first step is to shut down the, this inverter and the battery and dismantle the existing BMS setup.
After routing all the balance cables into the connector block, I'll test the voltages to ensure that I've not mixed up any of the sequence. This is really important to check before you plug it in. If you use a multimeter on the negative wire, the voltage should go up on each cell by around 3.3 volts. If the voltage goes down or doesn't change, stop, that, stop what you're doing and check the wiring as something is wrong. Be very careful with the multimeter probes as you don't want to short the cells. So finally, it's time to connect everything up. That's the two pin power lead to the uh, new cell monitor board. And then it's time to put in this uh, 17 pin connector. It's quite difficult to push in these in, but uh, take quite a bit of force. And then once it's powered up, it's, it, the uh, LED will flash to uh, prove it's connected back to the controller and the voltage readings will appear. I've uh, 3D printed a bracket to mount this into the uh, case. Here I'm removing the three temperature probe sensors. Uh, I need to replace those with uh, some longer cables. So I've drilled two holes in the side of this case and uh, I'm going to mount the monitor board in this position here. So this battery now is a bit of a spaghetti nightmare with the uh, balance cables going everywhere. There's actually two sets of balance wires, so one for the DIY BMS and then the other one for the active balancer. So unfortunately it does look a bit of a mess. I'm going to uh, spend some time to uh, tidy those up. Here's the balance board in operation. You can see it's actually uh, in the middle of uh, balancing quite a few cells. So this is a fully installed unit. I've uh, attempted to tidy up some of the cabling, but it's um, still a bit of a mess. Um, I've um, put some cable ties through to uh, neaten things up. And I've also mounted the active balancer on an insulation board and cable tied that to the middle of the, uh, the battery bank. So here we have the standard DIY BMS web interface. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty much identical to um, the previous uh, single cell monitor boards with these uh, 16 cell monitors. Uh, the round trip time is, is a lot lower. So uh, we're looking at less than 100 milliseconds for, the, for all of these 16 cells. Um, and as you can tell, because we've only got three uh, temperature sensors, uh, you only get a cell reading on the first three uh, cells on this, this screen, but that's, that's fine. That's um, how it's designed to work. Um, you'll also see the um, 31 and 32 degree C is the uh, temperature of the uh, heatsink. So that wraps up this video. All the files that, that you'll need to build this uh, solution are on the GitHub, and I'll put a link in the video description. If you'd like to support me over on Patreon, again, the link's in the description. And thank you for all my existing Patreon supporters for, uh, for helping me uh, build these solutions. See you in the next video.